This video will focus on creating custom rhythms on the CTX3000 and 5000 using the onboard rhythm editor. The CTX3000's rhythm controller section offers dedicated buttons for all four variations in every rhythm. Each variation also comes with a one or two measure fill-in that's activated by re-triggering a variation that's already playing. The intro and ending patterns behave a little bit differently. Whenever the intro finishes playing, it'll automatically transition into variation 1 if you don't have any other patterns queued up. Upon completion, the ending pattern will automatically stop rhythm playback. If you press the ending button while no rhythm is playing, you'll enable Synchro Start, which allows you to start rhythm playback by playing notes on your left hand. The flashing icons located in the bottom left of the display will indicate which patterns you have queued up for playback. By default, the rhythm controller buttons will only activate the drum tracks of each rhythm. However, you can press the accompaniment toggle button to enable an expanded backing track that responds to the chords you play on your left hand. To set the upper boundary of the chord control range in your left hand, long press the split button and then scroll right twice to bring up chord point, then use the selection wheel of the number pad to set the highest key that will be recognized for chord detection purposes. Alternatively, you can also just hold down the split button and then press a key to make that key the new chord point. To change the way the auto accompaniment features detect chord input, navigate to chord mode in the functions list and select one of the six different chord input modes as needed. I won't go into too much detail on the different modes in this video, but one of the modes I find most useful is full range. This setting will allow you to input notes for chord detection across the entire keyboard instead of just within the chord control range. Synchro Stop has its own dedicated button, and can be toggled on and off even in the middle of rhythm playback. When it's enabled, the backing track will stop playing whenever you release notes in your left hand, and automatically resume playback with the next key you press. This is particularly useful for accentuating fill and break sections in the middle of your composition. Attaching a sustain pedal will allow you to start and stop rhythm or song playback without needing to take your hands off the keys. To configure the pedal for this feature, bring up the functions list and scroll right to find the controller settings, then press enter. The first item you'll see is pedal, so press enter again to bring up the pedal settings submenu. In here, you can independently set the effect of both pedal inputs on the back panel allowing you to make use of hands-free rhythm control while still maintaining sustain or expression pedal functionality. Choose your preferred pedal and then use the plus and minus buttons to select the fourth option, rhythm slash song. Now that we know the basics of the rhythm controller, let's get into the rhythm editor itself. First, I'll show off how to duplicate and modify preset rhythms to highlight some helpful features within the rhythm editor. Once we're familiar with how everything is organized, it'll be much easier to record our own user rhythms from scratch. In order to edit a factory preset rhythm, you must first copy it to an empty user rhythm slot. Navigate to category 12 on the rhythms list and select one of the slots that says no data. Long press the function button and the rhythm editor menu will pop up. The flashing rhythm icons in the bottom left will indicate which pattern you're currently editing within the rhythm, and the flashing mixer part icon denotes which of the eight rhythm tracks you currently have selected. It'll always default to track 2 and variation 1 when you first enter the editor, but right now we don't currently have anything recorded in this rhythm, so we'll need to do some copying. Press the first registration button and you'll see a copy message pop up, along with a few options to choose from. Copying an element will copy over the data for all eight tracks of an individual pattern in a rhythm, like copying the variation 1 pattern from a preset to the blank variation 1 slot in our empty user rhythm. Copy part copies the data for one specific track within a pattern, so I could use it to bring over just the base part for variation 1 of my source rhythm. Copy part will come in handy later, but we'll stick with copy element for the time being. Whatever pattern you have selected before you copy an element will determine the destination of the data to be copied. But for right now, we'll just stick with the default variation 1 and then hit enter. 
This will take you back to the rhythm list, where you can select the rhythm that contains the data you want to copy. I'm in a bit of a bolasete mood today, so I'll choose bossa nova. The pattern I specifically want to bring over is variation 4, so I'll press that button and the flashing rhythm icons will change to reflect my selection. Now I'll just hit enter and yes to confirm the copy, then wait for the operation to complete. Hit exit and you should return to the rhythm editor screen, but now with the new pattern data copied over to the previously empty variation 1. This is a pretty good starting point, but there are still some parts I want to change. If you want to hear a specific track by itself, first press the part selector toggle button and then use the number pad to switch to the track you want to solo, which for me will be number 3, bass. Toggle the part selector off and then hit enter to isolate the selected track. From here you can hit enter again to bring all the other tracks back in. This electric bass part is fine, but I prefer the more active upright bass part in the orchestra bossa nova rhythm. So let's try to Frankenstein together some kind of super bossa nova rhythm and really get those breezy vibes going. With the bass track selected, press registration 1 to bring up the same copy menu, but this time we'll choose copy part and hit enter. Again, I'll scroll to my desired source rhythm and select variation 4, as that's the pattern that contains the bass part I want to copy over. At this point, you can use the part selector to choose one of the 8 tracks as the source part to be copied. I'm only copying track 3 to track 3 right now, so I don't need to change anything. Hit enter and yes to confirm the copy, and we'll end up back in the rhythm editor just like before. I'll go ahead and solo the bass track, just to make sure it transferred over properly. The next order of business is the percussion part on track 1. I think it makes the drum part a little bit too busy overall, so I'm going to go ahead and clear out that track. Switch to the track you want to clear out, and then press registration 2 to enter the clear menu. Clearing is a lot like the copying we just covered, but you'll also notice that we have an extra clear all option if we want to delete all the data contained within our rhythm. Right now, we only want to clear out one track, so we'll select part and then hit enter and yes to confirm the deletion. Now when I solo track 1, you'll hear that it's completely empty, but I can always go back and record something else to it if I need to. When I play all the tracks together, it seems like the bass part might be a little bit too quiet in the context of this new rhythm. To dial in a better balance, long press the part selector button to access the mixer parameters for all 8 of your rhythm tracks. Scroll left and right to choose the track you want to modify, and then scroll up and down to adjust the tone, volume, panning, and effect sense for that specific track. For now, I'll just raise the volume on the bass track and then play everything together one more time so I can hear the new balance. Now I've got a really nice foundation for composing the rest of my bossa nova rhythm. I'll cut things short here so we can move on, but if I wanted to, I could start building up my empty patterns by copying what I already have here to the other variations and making some changes from there. Using the copy function to duplicate material and move it to other patterns will save us a lot of time when we start recording rhythms from scratch. But one important limitation to keep in mind is that you can only copy pattern data to other patterns of the same type. So, you can only copy variations to other variations, you can only copy fills to other fills, and you can only copy intros and endings to other intros and endings. To save your work, press 7 on the number pad, and then yes to write the new rhythm data to the current memory location. If you hit 4 to exit the rhythm editor, you'll end up back in the rhythm list with this new no-name rhythm selected. To change this placeholder title to something more descriptive, long press record stop until the display shows rhythm name, and then hit enter. Use the arrow keys to move the cursor around, and the selection wheel to change each letter as desired. In my case, I think I'm going to do name. Hit enter and yes to confirm the name change, then press 4 to exit back to the rhythm list. Now that we have our bearings, let's try recording something from scratch. Select another empty rhythm slot and open up the rhythm editor. I'm going to work on variation 1 first, but I'll need to configure a few things since I'm starting fresh this time. Press registration 8 and you'll end up in the rhythm settings menu with element being the first option. Press enter and you'll be able to set the length and time signature of the currently selected pattern, which will be 4 bars of 4-4 time for me. Exit back to the main editor screen and select the part you want to record first. I recommend starting off with the drums so you have something to help you stay on beat while you record the other tracks. If I hit tone while I have track 2 selected, it'll automatically take me to the drum kit category of the tone list. I'm a pretty cool guy, so you know I'm going to use that hip hop set. If you look along the front edge of the keybed, you'll notice that the drum sounds assigned to each key are labeled for your reference. With your desired tone selected, press the record stop button and you'll enter record standby mode. We don't have anything recorded yet, so the display shows empty. Long press the record stop button and the recording settings will pop up, allowing you to enable the metronome, a 1 or 2 measure pre-count, and varying levels of quantization. 
By default, the metronome is on and you'll get a one measure pre-count, so I'll leave those settings alone. But I'm no master keyboard drummer, so I'm definitely going to need some help from quantization to stay on beat. I'm going to make it easy on myself and only record the rim snare and the clap on the first pass. For the second time through, I'll add in the ride cymbal. Finally, the kick drum and the hi-hats. Thanks to the magic of quantize, that actually sounds pretty good. But on second thought, I think I want to take out that kick drum on the downbeat of the fourth measure. Fortunately, the rhythm recorder has a spot clear function, so I don't have to clear out the whole track just to fix one note. During recording, hold down the second registration button to enable spot clear. Then press and hold the key that corresponds to the note you want to erase. Once you've erased the mistake, quickly let go of the key to avoid erasing notes you want to keep. Now let's record the bass line using the same process. One very important thing to keep in mind when you're recording the melodic parts on tracks 3 through 8 is that in order to maintain maximum compatibility with the chord detection features, you must record these parts in the key of C. This does not mean that your rhythm will always be played back in the key of C. Obviously that would be a huge limitation. Like I mentioned earlier, when auto accompaniment is enabled, the keyboard will detect the chords you play and transpose the rhythm accordingly based on that chord. However, when the CTX3000 performs this transposition, it assumes that whatever note data was recorded to the original rhythm was composed in the key of C. If you'd prefer not to record in the key of C, you can always transpose the keyboard before recording. This will allow you to input notes as if you were in a different key, even if the recorded data is still technically in C. Just make sure you don't forget to revert the transposition back to normal when you're finished. I'll just select a synth bass tone and jump right in. Once I end my recording, I'll be back in the rhythm editor like before, but if I hit play, I'll only hear the drum track until I enable accompaniment and play something to bring the other tracks back in. This is helpful if you want to see how your rhythm responds to chord play, but if not, it might be a bit inconvenient because part of the keyboard is being taken up for the chord control range. To get around this problem, engage record standby and then long press the accompaniment button until the icon starts to flash. This will enable rehearsal mode, which disables chord detection and allows you to loop all the tracks together when you press play. Long pressing the tone button will switch to the upper one instrument for further doodling. You can disable rehearsal mode and the audition tone by pressing the tone button again. Let's keep things moving and record an electric piano part on track 4. Now I'll finish up variation 1 with a cute little synth line on track 5. Now that all the recording is done, this is a good opportunity to open up the mixer and make fine adjustments to the balance and voice assignments before moving on. Once you've got everything dialed in for variation 1, I would recommend saving your progress so far just in case you want to revert back to this point later down the line. Now, I want my variation 2 to be mostly the same as variation 1, so I'll use that handy copy element function to duplicate the data and save some time. Keep in mind that the pattern you select before starting the copy process will be the destination for the copied data. I'll switch to variation 2 first, then select variation 1 as my source and perform the copy. For my new variation 2, let's keep things simple and just double the synth part with a different voice using the copy part function. I'll select the next empty track as my destination, then select track 5 as the source and confirm the copy. Now all I have to do is choose a new synth tone on track 6 and variation 2 is in the bag. Next, we have to configure the settings related to chord detection behavior for each track. Tracks 1 and 2 are percussion only, so they'll always behave the same way regardless of the chords you play. 
Select one of the melodic tracks and then hit Registration 8 to bring up the Rhythm Settings menu again, but this time we'll choose Part and hit Enter. In here, you'll find five parameters, Table, Breakpoint, Invert, Retrigger, and Bend Range. Each of these settings will help you optimize your custom user rhythm for maximum compatibility with the onboard chord detection features. Table refers to the chord conversion table for the part you have selected. Like I mentioned earlier, rhythm tracks are initially recorded in the key of C major, but can be transposed to a variety of different keys by playing chords with your left hand. The chord conversion table determines the way each part behaves when this transposition occurs, which helps keep your backing tracks sounding musically natural even when playing chords in non-standard voicings. There are 19 different conversion tables to choose from, most of which are optimized for either bass or chord parts depending on the type of chord you originally recorded that track with. The default settings for each track will work fine for most applications, but if you plan on using a wide range of chords and chord voicings in your composition, it's definitely worth doing more research into the subject. You can find a detailed list explaining the function of each table on page 87 of the manual. The breakpoint specifies which key, from C to B, is the point at which an individual track will drop down an octave during playback. This prevents parts from being transposed into note ranges where they might sound unnatural, which is very useful for bass tracks in particular. To help demonstrate this, I'll set the breakpoint to F and pull up a simple pattern that's just a C major chord on loop. If I input a D in the left hand, you'll hear that each of the notes just moves up a whole step, and the same goes for an E chord. But if I play an F, or any other key past the breakpoint, everything drops down an octave. Depending on the tone you've assigned to each part, the ideal breakpoint can vary for all of the separate tracks in your rhythm, so it might take a bit of experimentation with this setting to achieve the best results. Invert is mostly useful for chord parts, and it can be toggled on or off for each track. This setting determines whether or not a track will mirror inverted forms of the original chord during playback. So again, using the same example pattern, if I set Invert to off and input an F, it will preserve that same major triad when it performs the transposition, resulting in an F chord voiced as FAC. With Invert toggled on, the resulting chord will be built up using whatever notes are nearest to what was originally recorded, so that F chord is voiced as CFA instead of moving all the way up to FAC like before. Retrigger determines how each part responds to chord changes that occur in the middle of a pattern. Our C chord pattern is a two-measure loop of half notes, so if I have retrigger off and I change chords while notes are still being sustained, those notes will be cut short and playback will resume with the next chord. If retrigger is on and I try the same thing, the selected part will instantly retrigger to reflect the new chord, resulting in a more immediately responsive backing track. Bend range determines the maximum range of pitch bend wheel operations for the currently selected track. You can set it to any value between 0 and 24 semitones, allowing for pitch bends as small as a single half step or as large as two whole octaves. Once you've got all your different patterns recorded, the last things to configure are the global rhythm settings. Press Registration 8 and scroll over to Rhythm, then press Enter. Here, you can configure the master volume of your rhythm, as well as the reverb, chorus, and delay effects to be applied. These effects settings determine the type of reverb, chorus, and delay that will be used, whereas the mixer value saved in each pattern will determine how much a particular track will be altered by these effects.